Okay, everybody. I go live with Lindy Jewel. Hi, Lindy. Let's see if I can add you to the live. Success. Let's see if it works. Accept. Let's see. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Hey, thank you. Good morning all the way from Australia. I know. I, I always make a joke how you guys are like time travelers because you're in the future. <laughs> well, I, I can tell you today starts great. So you're all good. <laughs> oh, oh, yay. I'm We're so, so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited that Wednesday is good because when I'm where you are, I'll be waking up and running around and taking my kids to school and doing the, the morning rush. Yes. <laughs> It'll go great. <laughs> mm. From your lips to God's ears, because trying to get a 13-year-old ornery teenage boy to school in the morning oh, yeah. isn't the most fun. No, that is hard work. <laughs> yeah. It, can it's you hear me it okay? I'm can, sorry? Can you hear me okay? I can hear you great. So, so welcome. So we're, <laughs> it's our first time officially meeting face-to-face. -face. Um, I'm Dina for all of, for, for you, Lindy, Thank as you, well Dana. as everybody watching. I'm co-owner of The Apothecary. And you guys, I have, for those of you that are fr from The Apothecary Coven, I have on tonight with us Lindy Jewell, who is the creatrix of the fucking Honest Oracle, which is a great seller for us because if there's nothing I love more than cursing, it's, it's I don't know what it is because for those, of, for those people who know me, they know that I have a colorful language. <laughs> I call it enhancing. It enha enhances their English, doesn't it? It's, it's, yes, it's a great enhancer. So we've been stocking, I don't know how long, I mean, easily a year, if not longer, that we've been, we've been stocking your deck. Uh, cue, cue the dog barking, yes. because she doesn't bark all night, but the minute that we have to have a conversation, this is what's going to happen. Right? That's okay. We also, I only took this one with me, but we also have your kid's oracle yes. in stock as well. So that's... These ones, which mine's a bit haggard because I use it a lot, but the awesome kids. Awesome. Yep. Yes. And we've had the orange one, the motivated. Uh, the get motivated. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's this one. But we're they're out of stock, stock at the moment. One. Yeah, yeah. We're, I'm we're waiting stock. too. But when you when you when you have um when you have them, let us know because we'll restock uh, that. So, but Lindy, uh, you're a psychic medium. So <laughs> can you talk to me a little bit about? sort of like how you got started in the world. Like when did you first realize that you were a psychic medium? How do your gifts typically like show up for you? How you're most comfortable working with clients? I'm so interested to hear about your story. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess it's probably a little bit similar to a lot of people that do this work is I spend a lot of time going, is that a thing? Am I doing something fancy here? What's going on? Or getting messages and, and, and hints and tips from the universe or God or whatever you want to call it. And um, not recognizing it as being intuitive, I just didn't put things together because I haven't come from a like a, a background of people that do this stuff, and it was all a bit out there and weird. But I would often have conversations, like so often, it was getting to the point I was going, I've got to do something with this. Have conversations with people where they would say, I just feel better when I talk to you. You always say the right thing at the right time, and I would always go, Do I? Did I? How that happened? <laughs> always a surprise. But I discovered how, how valuable that was for people. People would seek me out, you know, out and about just to just to chat and sort of draw on my energy. I've got fairly high vibe energy mm -hmm. that I think um, matches where people need to be. So I've, I've definitely, as much as I call myself a psychic medium, energy healing, energy clearing is absolutely my jam. That's what I am here for. And it's part of the reason the um, fucking Honest Oracle cards came about because I think all this energy work can be done so much easier. I think that it can get to the point and just get shit done and stop fucking around with all the, you know, the floofiness and the drama of it and the rules and all the bullshit. I think that we can just get in and get it done. So it's kind of who I am. I <laughs> love that. So when in terms of, in terms of like the way you, en you work energy or you clear energy, do you have like an energy practice or you do it mostly with, with like, 
with the readings? Like, how does that work for you with your clients? Yeah, I always tell people, it's a, I, whenever someone books something with me, it's, I just refer to it as a session because they always get a bit of psychic, a bit of mediumship if they need it, and absolutely a bloody big wallop of energy healing as well. So um, I kind of feel in, the way I explain it is that I feel into someone else's energy and just see what they need the most. So it's almost like, but I always feel like I'm bumping myself out of the equation and I'm being utilized or used or, or you know a accessed by their energy to be able to sort shit out because i think that we get we get so weighed down and impacted by our shit and everybody else's you know stuff that they give us and all that sort of stagnant energy that hangs around us to be able to move that for people is a big deal and it just makes, makes them feel so much better so i guess probably um intuitively i can i all of the clear senses i i can tap into all of those but it will depend like i could i could work with you dina um you know this week and then you come back next week or a month or a year and it will be an entirely different session because it will be exactly what you need rather than i work like this i think that's a bit restrictive right. so absolutely just this open-hearted let's see what comes up and it's always fun i always yeah. get such a buzz people go oh i've brought all my heavy, heavy energy you must feel terrible i'm like no bring it i fucking love that's, it that's awesome that's so awesome and you know i feel like now more than ever people have such heavy energy like i i just feel like after the whole um the covid pandemic thing has really left people having a hard time moving energy and and interacting, you know, interpersonal communication, interpersonal dynamics have become very difficult for people. So mm. how do you find, like, do you find that to be the case? Because I feel like people have, like, changed a little bit. Yeah, since, absolutely. Since I, refer to, I refer, refer to it as a social hangover. Like, we've all, we all got, like, it was such a kind of slap in the face to all of us to have to shut down everything socially. And then we got really comfortable with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then getting back out in the world feels like, oh, this is sticky. This is hard. People are complicated because we are, because we're all fucking human and we've all got shit going on. But um, encouraging people to get out of their shells, I think, is a big one. But anxiety comes with that. And anxiety yeah. is such a, you know, it's so quick to mess up your energy and mess with your head and impact your emotions and and kind of impact people at all levels and mess with your nervous system as well so it's not an easy thing for people to say oh just get over it or just go for a walk or just do this i think sometimes you, you need someone to kind of hold your hand energetically and help you walk out of that because there is a desire for people to feel better they just kind of don't know where to start and i i often have people come to me that say i've done i've done counseling and i've done psychology and i'm absolutely all for that and it's brilliant but some people don't communicate well what their feelings are because they don't fucking know. So to have someone intuitive tune in and say, I'm feeling this and I'm aware of that. And it helps them go, oh, God, yeah, that's it. That's what I've been trying to yeah. understand in my own head and my own heart to get rid of it. But sometimes you need someone else to open that door for you. So that's what I feel like I do. Oh, that's, that's really, I, I really, really love that because I think, you know, it's really interesting because a lot of times times you know obviously having a physical shop and having people come into the shop a lot of people are looking for something or in need of something right that's why that's why they find their, themselves walking through the door and i actually had a woman come in last week and she just was just so like you know in one of those like hate it all hate everything moods where we get sometimes where we just you hate one thing and then the next thing and then the next thing and then you're in like this like burn it all down dumpster fire energy where you hate everything and i was trying to speak to her to, to sort of get a sense like let's let's just like let's not pick everything let's just talk about one thing and she couldn't she couldn't give voice to what was really upsetting her and i yeah it's hard yeah it is it's really hard so i get confirmation burps which is just weird but it's how it works um but yeah that thing where people trying to to um <laughs> but right all this shit's weird but it's really i love weird. it i think the more that we get people involved with the weird and going i and being willing like it's such an a, 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 a really um a level of vulnerability to be mm -hmm. celebrated when someone comes in and goes, I don't fucking know. I just know that I'm broken. I don't know what I need. I don't know what I want. I've become a bit of a shit magnet. How can you help me? I just feel like, oh, it's such an honor. It is yeah. genuinely an honor for us to be in the position to be able to offer things up or connect with them in a way that, um, you know, lets us see really who they are 
deep down because we're very good at putting on the facade and going, I'm great, everything's awesome, it's brilliant. But underneath that, we may not be, and that's okay, but we don't have to stay in that space. Right, absolutely. Listen, we're all we're all messy in our own ways, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's the way. That's the way it goes. Yep. So, what do you what do you think you want to do tonight? I feel like that's sometimes or more, more than I'd like to admit. What, like Bella? That's why that's Bella. Bella works with us. <laughs> Hi, Hi Danielle, co-owner of the shop, is on. Danielle's my business partner. Oh, Hi, Danielle. Danny. So I don't know what you had in mind for tonight. I did bring your deck of cards. I don't know if you want to pull cards. Do you yes. pull them? If you want to do a little channeling, we could sort of, I figure we could fuck around with it a little bit. Yes, absolutely. I love that, that saying. Is it Canadian, that fuck around and find out? I oh, fuck like around and more. find out is, <laughs> you know, <laughs> one of my favorite one of my favorite and like we have it on stickers at the shop we always say like you're gonna fuck around you're gonna find out like yeah. i don't know where it originated but I love it. like we we oh. now we we uh we are uh, now uh shortened it to fafo so if you don't want to say fuck around and find out you can just say fafo i love that <laughs> Papa. So Danielle said she'd take a card. So I don't know. Yeah, Lindsay, I'd, you want to pull one? I'd love to. Yeah, let's Beautiful. play that game. Let's play with a card. Play. So um, for those who don't know, these are the fucking honest oracle cards, which I created here in Australia. They're amazing. Um, and they really are, my, my intention with these, I'll just give you a little, very quick little run yeah. of why they came about was, when I first stepped into all of this stuff, someone said to me, oh, you should get Oracle cards. And I went, okay. And I raced out and bought Oracle cards. And then I left them in the plastic for six, for 18 months because I just didn't know what to do with them. And then when I did eventually open them and pull one, I went, well, what the fuck does that mean? It was very vague and very, I mean, beautiful, but very, you know, out there. And I was going, I don't understand. I don't get it. So I thought, wouldn't it be great to have Oracle cards for people where you could be a tradie, you could be a doctor, you could be something, you could be anything, anywhere and completely in an instant understand what the message is. So that's what that, and I'm Australian, we swear a lot. So it was just fun, like to, to make Oracle cards and all the woo-woo things a bit more fun and less weird, I think was a big deal. And um, honestly, the reaction to them, I, I was astounded how quickly they sold out and I've reprinted oh, yeah. them like six times and I've got to do it again. Um, and it's led to, like you said, the awesome kids and the motivated. And then I've got the new deck coming, which I know you pre-ordered. Thank you. Pre-ordered. Yes. The crude, crude creatures. How crude cute creatures. is that? Yes. Show us some crude creatures. Yes, I, I will. So this is um. So these are. So the images are gorgeous. The words, not so much. So I wanted that contrast <laughs> of beautiful, whimsical imagery with um i'm just pulling up random ones here with um you know a little bit of diversity a little bit of you know just all different people because i don't know about you but you look at the all the beautiful fairy cards and all the gorgeous things and they're all these absolutely aesthetically pleasing you know fairies or beings and i just wanted real people doing well you know dancing with unicorns real people you know what i mean but just right. <laughs> But just a bit of fun. But the um the but book is just as direct as the fucking honest, if not more. So um yeah, so I can pull some of those as well. So for Danielle though, if, I'll grab you an honest card. Let me see what comes up for you with the honest deck, Danielle. That's the one being called for for you. Oh, here we go. Oh, this one. Stop, feel it, decide. Mm. So this is um for everybody watching um if you don't all get a card make sure that you feel which one resonates the most for you and take the information from that one but stopping's kind of hard we don't stop often we're always go 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 and doing things and i feel like danielle for you particularly there needs to be a break and some breathing and it says no more dicking around pause for a moment and really ask yourself what you want then do that actually do that don't talk about it don't brainstorm it again just make a fucking decision and go with that Remember that you are as clever as fuck and this is your life. You cannot fuck it up. I love that. It's your life. You cannot fuck it up. I know, right? And I think we forget that. We forget that it's in our hands. Like we absolutely have permission to do what we want to do. And at the end of the day, that people will move on and move around whatever your decision is. So, you know, mm -hmm. honour you. It's important. Absolutely. That's a great card. And... I, I know what's going on with Danielle and it's actually perfectly perfect because when you're going through something in your life and you know, you're in the weeds of a decision and you're like this, then this, or I'm going to do this. And then, you know, it's all moves and counter moves. I'm going to do this. They're going to do this. I'm going to do this. They're going to do this. Fuck it. Just 
make a plan, make a decision, go. Yeah, absolutely. Love absolutely. It. So do we want one next from the crew creatures cards? Should we do that? Yeah, yeah let's do yeah. crew creatures. Yeah. Okay. Should I do one for you, Dina, or for one of the... Um... Um, oh, my God. Dare I take... Give me a card. <laughs> I never do this. I'm like, ah, fuck. Oh, I can't read it because I don't have my smart glass. But the echidna one... Okay. So obviously we know that all animals and everybody has energy. So this is my interpretation of the energy. So, and they all got little, you know, like that people call snakes, note ropes and whatever. I gave them all little Aussie. Um, so it's called a spiky gives no fucks. <laughs> and it's all about self-worth. Have you ever met an echidna? They're bloody amazing. No. I love them. No, they're, they're, they're awesome. So much to, for us to learn from echidnas and their phenomenal ability to give no fucks. They cross the road and expect traffic to manoeuvre around them, which it usually does. They have spikes and are cute and lay eggs and feed their babies milk. At an evolutionary level, these creatures are determined to be 100% themselves. Take a little inspiration from these absurd little critters and embrace all your weirdness. Fuck it, be you. <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. I have to tell you. I, I don't I don't know if that's like an invitation for me to be you or if be, to be myself or if it's just like a confirmation because I literally drive my mother crazy. <laughs> and I have I just turned 48 and she's like another tattoo. What the fuck? <laughs> well, there's also a bit of self worth you know in, in that message there as well. Yeah. Like. The, because we can be ourselves as much as we want, but we still think, oh, oh God, mum's going to say something. And it still impacts our energy oh, a little yeah. bit and shuts us down a tiny bit. So a little bit of, oh, my God. I mean, your energy is just gorgeous. The sparkliness <laughs> coming out of you is amazing. So <laughs> shine that shit everywhere. Yeah. The world needs yeah. it. That is so funny. So Bella said that she would take a card. I got a bunch of people now that are like, yeah, uh, yeah, we're into uh, it. Oh, excellent. Fantastic. So, All right, Bella. 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 Bella, you're getting a fucking honest card. <clears throat> so obviously people can pre-order the um crude creatures cards from you so that you know exactly how many you yep. need we're gonna we'll put the crude creatures up on the website tomorrow so if you guys want to pre-order you can um we do have fucking honest in stock and up on the website now as well as the awesome kids deck fucking motivated we're waiting yes. for um but crude creatures will get up tomorrow so you guys can pre-order and and that way if we need to get more we will because you know yeah. shipping from australia isn't quick exactly it's not quick but it's not as slow as i thought it was it's only been, yeah. it's been taking less than two weeks so far before christmas it will change but yeah yeah so good. i get them in the post very quickly so you should have them before the end of november absolutely perfect um so bella this is for you i bloody love you tell yourself oh damn and bella that, and even Bella, even thinking about that, I feel like, oh, that's a big call. Like, that's not something that sits comfortably with you to tell you, to remind yourself that you're completely fucking awesome. So please do that because you are. And it says, self-love is not just about touching yourself until it feels good. Oh, wait, that's masturbation. Never mind. <laughs> you, <laughs> you are allowed to love you. All your quirks, all your weirdness and imperfections. Take a look back at your life and give yourself a moment to appreciate the shit out of yourself. You are fucking awesome and deserve to be loved, especially by you. Yes. Yay, Bella. That's perfect for Bella. Bella oh, has such intimacy issues. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead and touch yourself. You've got permission. Oh, wait, it's not that. <laughs> I love that so much, so much. You know, these. It's, what's really interesting is these cards are very sneaky because they're on the surface, I think, you know, with, with the expletives, people won't, people might not at first realize like how serious and how very personal and how very deep the meanings are. Oh, They're very, absolutely. very yeah. deep. Yeah. And deliberately so. Like they're not, it wasn't that I just, um, because it was all, all the messages were downloaded about how to, like, I call it downloaded as in, you know, intuitively connected and downloaded to be able to get people to have a laugh but then also really think and i love that and it's not just think it's connect and recognize that in themselves so um and again it doesn't that you don't have to be fully immersed in all the woo woo things to do it but if you are you absolutely can see through the yes. profanities and straight to the message and the meaning and i think it really does give 
it just puts a bit of a spring in your step. And I love that. I love that they can be just a little dose of healing every day if that's how you use your cards and um, just a, a reminder of your brilliance. Do you ever use your cards as a clarifier against tarot? Um, tarot itself, like true tarot, I don't do because I'm not very good at rules and remembering that this card means that. <laughs> Oh, girl, obvious, we, have to, we have to talk. You don't need to remember shit. You just need to look at the picture. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'd love to. I actually, do you know what's really funny, though, is that I do actually have a tarot deck kicking around in my head like that. I think there is going to be a tarot deck from me, but I've got to sit with someone and learn how to use them. But um, absolutely, like I will, I, I, I bloody love a pendulum, and I'm sure you sell those in the shop. Mm -hmm. um, so if I'm not, if I'm feeling sort of out of sorts or not sure, I'll, I'll grab one of my cards or one of the many others. I've got like 40 Oracle card decks just over there. Um, but yeah, they, they always are just as accurate as the others as well, where they just push you in the right direction and, and kind of often give me the kick in the ass that I need so I can get moving. Because <laughs> they're great for when you're feeling stuck, aren't they? Oracle cards just, or tarot cards in general. Right. I think. Right. If you're feeling stuck or you need a direction or a little bit of clarity, they're amazing. But I was, I was actually just like, oh, this would make this deck in particular, I think would make a really good clarifier. So like sometimes like you can, you read tarot with Oracle together. So I, I do that a lot. I know mm -hmm. a lot of other readers do where if you throw, have a couple cards down and you're looking, you're like, ah, oh, what else? you know, you put the Oracle on top of it to like give it a little bit more color. And I think your cards would definitely give a lot of color. Yeah. Yes. Right. <laughs> and colorful language. Yes. yes. <laughs> so when, Wendy said that she would like a card. Who's that? Well, sorry, Wendy? Wendy. Wendy. Yeah, Wendy. Some of my favorite people are called Wendy, Wendy. Oh, Wendy. So this is great. That's a beautiful. Oh. Step away from the bullshit. Oh. Sometimes we're not very good at that, are we? Just absolutely. No, sometimes the bullshit is addicting. Yeah. And we can become sort of shit magnets for it too. Sometimes you go, oh, God, more? What's going on? You can't take it personally. Oh, so much bullshit, so little time. Recognize that. You just don't have the time to be sucked into someone else's shitstorm. See it on the radar and drive around that fucking thing. Stay well clear of any crap that isn't yours. You've got enough to deal with. Yes, 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 yes. And it's, it's messages like that too that make us recognise how much other people's energy impacts us and how much people are, perhaps not deliberately, but some people can be a little bit manipulative with energy. Oh, can you do this? Can you help me with that? Oh, this is terrible for me and I'm going to download on you again. And just having a message like that can sometimes be the thing that you need to go, oh, hold up, I'm just going to create a little bit of space between you and me, whether it's energetically or time or distance just to take a break so that i think that's an underlying message there for you wendy yeah oh i love that wendy let us know how that resonates for you um we have another card kill L lc21 what is your of course i can't remember her first name which like i'm like seeing it and i can't remember i cannot remember it um LC21, let me know. Remind me of your first name and let's get one. Um, let's do a card poll for Angela. Angela? Is this Angela yeah. or is this LC? Um, Angela. We're gonna wait till we get LC's name okay. and then we'll do Angela and then okay. I'll look for LC's name. Angela, number 26. It's funny with you, Angela. I felt very drawn to the number. So I don't know that this number is particularly means anything because, again, numerology, love it. Don't remember the rules. Um, but uh, do keep an eye out, Angela, for numbers as being a little bit of a nudge from the universe for you. But it says slow the fuck down. Oh, my goodness. Sometimes we, we there's a lot of us probably need to hear that. What number is that one? Oh, 26. Yeah. Slow the fuck down. You don't need to do all the things all the time. Burnout sucks hard and you don't want to go there. Take a fucking break, catch your breath and prioritise your energy expenditure. Yes. Yes, go. and breathe. You definitely need to breathe, breathe, breathe too. I think, I don't know, Angela, I get the sense that Angela like grits her teeth. Like Angela might be mm. like a nighttime um, jaw clencher. I don't know if that's true, but that's like the sense that I'm getting that like, that like at night, Angela's like, mm. <laughs> Keep my shit together. Sometimes uh -huh. that's a bit of a thing, isn't it? <laughs> I, well, listen, I, I, I feel that energy a lot. So LC21's name is Lee, which like... Lee? We're, 
Lee. So let's oh, get I'm not sure. Lee. Lee, coming up. It's funny, those Insta handle things, isn't it? I can never work out who's who. All right, let's see. Oh, here we go. I love when they jump out. <laughs> Lee, please don't take this personally. Let me read the book first. But it says, you're being an asshole. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, Lee. What happened? Wait, wait for the book. Wait for the book. <laughs> Turn it around. <laughs> okay. Um, stop it. No one likes an asshole. Are you sending shit vibes to yourself or someone else? Either way, stop it. Clear that low vibe crap out of your energy field and shine your fucking light. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Sometimes we can be so down on ourselves, and I think this is where it sits for you, Lee. We can go, oh, fuck, oh, I haven't done the dishes and I didn't sort this out and that hasn't happened yet. And, and no, I haven't, you know, and, and being really negative towards yourself, that shit's got to stop for you. So no more of that. Spin it around and appreciate the shit out of yourself. That's a much better way to be. So we have a question. Let's throw a question in in yeah. between the card calls. Danny asked, when did you first realize you were psychic? When did you, like, how long have you been leaning into your gifts? Like, when did you first realize that? I, I know you said, you know, when you first introduced yourself that like over time, you're like, hey, maybe there's something more, more to just synchronicities and me knowing stuff and people feeling so comfortable around you. But like, when did you, when were you really like, damn it, like this is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my big aha moment kind of thing was when I was, I think I was about 19, 18 or 19, and I was, and it was before Google because I'm that old, but I was dry, I live up in the Dandenong Ranges in Melbourne, so which I'm very grateful for, but there's lots of animals crossing the road all the time. And when I learned to drive, when I was driving, I would always have a little message in my head going slow down, and I'd come around, there'd be a possum or a wombat or an echidna on the road, and I would miss it. And I would always be really grateful, like, oh, thanks whoever that was, whatever that was, didn't really, never told anyone, thought it was absolutely batshit crazy, but I always, always listened and I always was grateful for it. And this one day I was driving up Mountain Highway, which is quite a windy road, um, very much, very close to where I live now. And I got a huge, almost screaming in my head, stop, stop the car, stop. And it was kind of in the daytime and there was no reason and it's a fairly quiet road. And so I did, I stopped the car thinking that there was going to be a wallaby or something jump out or a kangaroo or whatever. And, um, and next thing around the corner came this car on my side of the road. And I really went, oh, that was, and I got the full body tingles and went, wow, you know, thank you, whoever that was. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because it would have absolutely cleaned me up and probably knocked us both over the hill, um, potentially. Wow. And then, and then I went to take off and then and the voice was even, even louder and even more insistent. And I was thinking, sitting there thinking, and this is all in like seconds. This isn't over a span of time. This is in a really short chunk of time. And I was thinking, well, I've missed the car. What's the problem? And the next thing, a four-wheel drive came around the corner sideways and it had apparently been racing this other car down the road. And I, it would have, if we hadn't fallen off field the first time, it would have cleaned up both of us and it would have been absolute carnage. So, and that was when I, I pretty much just burst into tears and, and the, the feeling that I got, like I was, um, I just went, I've got to do something with this. I can't ignore this now. Like this was, I'd already had so many, so many over many years, little things happen or saying the right thing at the right time or, or, you know, thinking about someone and they'd show up or whatever it was. But um, this was so big, I couldn't ignore it. But there was nowhere to go and there was nothing, like my family were definitely not into it. They're all anti, well, they were at that point, or very much anti all of this stuff. Um, and the only people I knew that did it were sort of real full-on hippies that were just off the planet and, and it was too much. And so I ended up going and, um, and kind of, kind of um, taking their recommendations for exp groups and stuff to attend and, and exp um, you know, intuitive expansion opportunities, but nothing really sat right. Mm -hmm. I just would, but I learned over time to go to these things and I didn't have to take on board everything everybody said. I just, all I had to do was go, well, that resonates with me and all of that shit doesn't and I'm not taking it, but I liked that. Or... I liked that person in the group. What are you doing next? I'm going to come and do that too. So it was a right. really nice, um, the fact that at the beginning, there's a whole lot of shit that just did not sit right for me. And I went, I'm not that weird. I'm not, I'm weird. Yes, but I'm not that weird. So, right. <laughs> so I think finding I, my way was, yeah, was I, tricky. I really want everybody to really pay attention to what was just said, because I think a lot of times, 
when people are trying to develop their gifts or they're just getting into spirituality or any of the clairs or reading cards, Oracle, Tarot, whatever it is, and we attend these events and we meet all these people and there's somebody that's standing in the front of the room that's instructing you or telling you something that because they're on the stage and you're in the audience, there's just this because this is how we were raised, right? A teacher in the front of the class yeah. and us being students and writing everything down that, okay, this, this must be what it is. But I think it's really important what you just said because it gives people permission once again to take what resonates and, and to not feel like they have to accept everything that everybody says to them as to how it will be for them. Because I think how gifts come across is as individual as we all are. It's going to be different for everybody. Oh, I absolutely agree. And I say to my people all the time, I do a lot of expansion courses and mentoring and stuff. And I say to people, I want you to learn your language in this. I don't want you to learn mine. I will help you and I'll give you examples of my stuff. And some will resonate and some will not. Always run it through your own filter because I really genuinely believe it's it's about learning your own language. And it's mm -hmm. and you all you need is the ABCs and then you'll flourish. But it takes time. You're not you don't go from from kindergarten or prep or whatever to writing essays. You you pick up bits as you go and you get better and better and you let it flourish and you let it evolve. And I think the other thing that um, I, I, th I encourage people to do as well is let it expand, let it change. I work so differently now, so differently than I did at the beginning. And it's all just been a process of, of listening when something comes up as something different and going, oh, we're we doing that now. Okay, sure. And I'll move my hands differently on someone's body or communicate with them differently. Or, But it just is, um, you know, if it's an online thing, I think, oh, God, I've never seen that before. I've never felt it this way before. But it doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means, oh, oh I've up-leveled some, somewhere or this message has to come through for that particular way, this particular way for this particular person for them to really understand it and really resonate with it. Interesting. Yeah, abs absolutely. I, it, it's, it's a, it, that's actually a validation as well because I think you get used to sort of the messages from spirit in a certain way or healing in a certain way. And yeah. as you evolve or as you grow or you learn more, it does change. Mm. And I know I've struggled with that because, you know, you know, when, 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 and I'm going to say this again, when I do energy healing, which isn't often, um, because I don't want people like rush, <laughs> rushing to schedule because I don't have a ton of time. But when I do it, it now it looks drastically different than than six, seven years ago. Drastically yeah. different. Yeah. Um, and every once in a while, I'm like, you're not doing any of the shit that you used to do. Like, like, I'm like, am I doing the right thing? Because the shit that I used to do, like, I'm not doing any of that shit. But it's, it's, it's crazy how, how things evolve and how things change. It, it really yeah, is. absolutely. And I really think it's for the benefit of everybody to change and evolve and do the things. So, but we get, we do, we get caught in, this is the routine, this is the rhythm, this is how it goes. And it's just not necessarily the case. I, I think that, um, and I think particularly for you, Dina, as well, like you, you absolutely can do your readings and there's, there's a beautiful amount of energy that comes from you that clears people be instantly. So, you know, you can dramatize the shit out of it and need to do it in a particular way. You just fucking do it. You know, it's up to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really interesting that you should say that because I, you know, used to be like, people are booking you for an hour. And now it's like really interesting. Cause like, I'll talk to, for me, it's more like the talking first. Like I need to talk yes. to you first before Same. I start fucking around in your energy. Like I need to like, we need to do this thing. Yep. And then like, it might be 20 minutes and I'm like, get the fuck out. Like, <laughs> you're good. Bye. Get the fuck out. Like I got nothing yeah, left absolutely. for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It can be, it doesn't have to be a set time. So I, I don't know. I just, I just love this work. I love being able to help people at that level, whether, whether they're in front of me or on a screen or even just on a phone call, yeah. like the difference that it makes to people's energy is, and it makes no logical sense whatsoever, I think. And that's where a lot of people get stuck is they want to know, like, how do you do it? How does it work? And I genuinely say to people, I don't fucking know. Yeah. Like, I, just, I no know clue. that I can.
Yeah. Like I know what I've learned and I incorporate that, but I don't know how it makes you feel better. It just does. Like, well, you know, you can question the shit out of it if you want, or you can just accept it and appreciate it. Right. It doesn't matter. And, and feel better and, you yeah. know, unfuck yourself a little bit. Yes. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so Family Not 22 has been very patient. They said they would like a card. So I figured because sure. we've been, we've been chatting we it up over here. Yeah, you can have a new card for wait. Oh, hello. Ooh. This one jumped out. Jumped out very quickly for you. And it is Eagle, Majestic Flapper. <laughs> uh, number 22. 22. And it says, trying to figure out the next step towards your future happiness can be tricky, even on a good day. You've been having a crack at it when you are covered in the heavy energy of your past plus the bullshit that you're surrounded with right now. Shift your perspective. Remember your awesomeness and fly fucking high. Yes. So it's all about having a clearer perspective. Change of perspective is so important. It's hard when we're like in, I, like in the weeds, right? We're, when we're in the weeds of our problems, like it's so hard to get that clarity. Mm -hmm. And I often say to people, the work that we do, Dina, like, like, I don't know about you, but I go and see other healers and readers because my shit's here. Everybody, if your own shit is here, you can't get a clear perspective. But for someone like you or me to come in and go, oh, yeah, I can see that and I can see this going on. And mm -hmm. it makes it like, why would you fuck around trying to whack your way through the jungle when someone just pick you up and move you forward? It's so much easier. You know what? That's a good perspective. Shall I shall be, I shall be scheduling soon. <laughs> Yep. I'm really, I'm really funny. I'm like, I'm like not, I don't love people in my energy, which is like really funny about it. Like some people are like, can I give you a hug? And I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you must. <laughs> Meanwhile, Danielle, my business partner is such a hugger. She's like, let me give you a hug. I'm like, ah, stop touching people. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, God, I hope I get to meet you guys in person. That would be awesome. I promise would to respect your space, but I'm going to hug the shit out of Danielle. No, I will <laughs> hug you. I definitely will. I just, it's like, it, 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 like, I'll hug you, like, in the back room so nobody else sees. Because I need to be able to say no to certain people and not feel guilty about it. Yeah, Like, yeah. can I give you a hug? I'm like, no. <laughs> not like, Belle is, Belle is definitely not a hugger also. Bella and I are like really, really, really like tight. Like me, Bella, Daniel, we're all tight. Daniel's like, let's hug. And Bella and I are like, oh, high five. <laughs> <laughs> like, stay, keep your shit over there. Um, <laughs> you know, oh my God. You know, it's, you work in a meta metaphysical shop. And I always say to people, every once in a while, people accidentally leave their gremlins, their goblins, and their fucking demons in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to hug you and get one directly from the store. Mm. So it's, it's That's we're right. good. We're good. <laughs> um, anybody else? <laughs> Angela, I will always take a hug from you, Angela. You literally have the name Angel in your name. No, oh, beautiful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, anybody else want a card? How about a card for Mary? Let's get yeah, absolutely. Even, Ooh, you're, even though Mary you're... didn't ask, tough titties, Mary, you're getting one. You're getting one, Mary. You're getting one from the crew creatures. Oh, another one's jumped out. Oh, badass versatility. I can read that without my smart glasses. And it is Crocodile, Snappy Stealth Lizard. So this is number 41. says as everyone around you jumps on the latest fad you know the value of evolving at your own pace yes which is exactly what we we're just talking about you're already completely fucking brilliant don't go changing just because it seems like you should mm. smile wide dive deep and surprise the shit out of everyone when you leap up out of nowhere whenever it suits you so yes all about timing with that one too yes mary i love that i love that I have a, I have a sense that that's perfect for you, Mary. And Mary um, is amazing. She's our publicist. She's who you you were working oh, with. That's, Mary, were, Mary. That's, that's Mary. Mary. And Mary has twin boys. So like that are I think seven or eight. Hopefully, Mary, I'm getting that right. So t timing, I'm sure, is certainly everything. Yes. And you definitely have to do you when you have. Yeah. When you have. And, young and particularly like for everybody watching now or later. 
when, when your kids are that age, your life is on hold to a degree. So mm -hmm. if there's stuff that you want to do, don't feel like, oh, I'm never going to get to do it. Like it probably will happen. It will come about or timing will be right. So there's no need to push and demand and be cranky that you can't do something. Sometimes there is a need to pause and doing it in a time that suits you and maybe your family. Does, it's not a, don't use your family though as a bullshit excuse not to do the things that you are here to do because you can, you can actually make things work. You definitely can. Yeah. It's just, you're right. It's a little bit different when your kids are young. You, it is, it can feel really frustrating, but it does, it, everybody says it goes quick and it does go it quick. Does. It's actually scary. It's, yeah. It's and little... that's the thing too. Like as much as I talked about, you know, that, that instance with the car, like the, the real aha moment for me with my intuition and psychic ability and whatever, like that was when I was 19. I didn't actually start doing this full time until I was 42. So oh, wow. it's not that... Yeah, I know. But there was lots of bits and lots of part-time stuff and little bits and pieces I was doing along the way and just fitting it in when I could. I had young kids. My oldest um, had has autism. I say had because now he's fully functioning and, and out in the world. But when he was in school, it was a really difficult time. So, so taking the focus off him just wasn't possible at that point. But, you know, letting everything, you know, working part-time, renovating our house, getting the kids sorted, there was really no time for me to do exactly what I wanted to do until that point. So it waited for me. And now I'm absolutely loving, loving what I do, contributing to others and making a difference in a way which re really is important to me. And it had to fucking wait. And that was that. It's right. Wrong. Sometimes you just, that's how it goes. And I know, yep. I know Mary can appreciate that. I can appreciate that because my 13 year old son has autism and it's, you know, it's just, it's just how it goes. It's, it's, you know, you, you, you do, you do the thing you got to do for your kids, right? Yeah, you do. They are the priority, you, you know, that's how it works. So, but that's all right. Everything falls into place. So exactly. So let's pull a card for M. Cole. I believe M. Cole's first name is Maureen. I hope I'm getting that correct. I try to remember Ooh. everybody's names off their Insta handles. Oh, Insta handles are weird. All right, let me have a look. There's a, oh, I got a confirmation burp with this one too. Oh, you got there being an asshole. So you're Ooh, of your being an asshole. That's they're good validation. We always yeah. want to know that they're being an asshole. I know. Because sometimes you do think, is it me? Is it them? What's going on? There are two ways to deal with an asshole. Get caught up in the shit that dribbles from them or walk the fuck away from the stench they are creating for themselves and others. Not that fucking hard to choose, really. Have total trust in the fact that you are smart enough to work out which is the way to go on this one. So there are an asshole, Maureen. Just yes. stop. Just feel like they're an asshole. It's enough. Like that's that's your. And they could be a whole organization, and it's not necessarily one human. It could be something that you're dealing with rather than than one person. So right, something over someone. Yeah, it could be. Yep, absolutely. Oh my gosh, oh, unbelievable. I love that. I love that confirmation for you that they're being an asshole because I know a lot of times you're like, because like usually like you're actually being the asshole. Somebody wants, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but Maureen, it's not you, it's them. And Maureen says she knows who they are. So that's, oh, that's amazing. Big, that's good. confirmation. Good. And isn't it funny? Like, and it's often the case that people kind of, you know, moving in our world, in the weird woo woo world, are the ones that quite have an enormous amount of empathy. And we kind of have this thing where we're like, oh, they, they've probably had a bad day, or they're, maybe they've, you know, maybe they're this, or maybe they're that, or maybe it's me, or maybe I've contributed, or maybe I've created it. Sometimes they're just assholes. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, that we can have all the empathy in the world. And sometimes you just got to go, fuck it, that's it, over, no more, done, I'm stepping back. Yes, perfect. I love that. I love that for you, Maureen. Okay, Star, Stars Strasses would like a car. Sure. Okay, we're getting a Crude Creatures. Ooh, I love, I'm really excited to get the, this, these Crude Creatures. Oh, I can't wait for the, the rest of them to arrive. So obviously I've got the sample deck here, but when the rest of them are, oh, honestly, can't wait. Can't wait to get them out in the world. And have you seen the image I picked for the back of them? These this little chubby lady with her butterfly. I bloody love it. Oh my God. I, I love it. I love it so much. Uh, so and you've cute. got alpaca. Am I putting it so you yep. can see it? And it says um, alpaca, smile like fuck. All right, let's see where that goes. It says you're doing a great job of showing everyone your calm exterior. We know that there's a whole lot of potent fury bubbling away underneath that, just ready to spit out at the next asshole who looks at you wrong, don't we? 
Try your best to keep it under control by repeating, fuck you, motherfucker, in your head while keeping a smile on your face. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, and you know what's great is that I read these and genuinely get a giggle because I don't remember because all this stuff was downloaded, all these words, and then I forget that I've written it. So it's great. <laughs> I... <laughs> I don't know if it's, you know, and, and here's the thing that I just have to say, because I have a very heavy New York, Long Island accent, but hearing you in your Australian accent say, fuck you, motherfucker, just made me <laughs> giggle. Maybe I should do an audio book of the cards. <laughs> You totally should. That just, just the accent. sent me. <laughs> that just fucking sent me. And because like <laughs> I could hear it like in your fuck you, motherfucker. But the way you said it <laughs> was like so lovely. As if like Glenda the Good Witch from the Wizard of Oz came down and said, fuck you, motherfucker. I love it so much. I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good so good yeah you do you should just once a week just go live on your on your instagram and just read them I, I... <laughs> <laughs> that's so bella said she needs it as a ringtone on her phone <laughs> so good and then i'll send it to you in New York accent and then you could play it for all the people in Australia. Yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> Cross-pollination of the accents. I yes, love it. I love it. I love it so much. Oh my goodness. Everybody said they like they that they need this deck. They're so happy. Bella actually said that we just, oh, Bella actually already has it up on the website. I just need to fix the price because it's in Australian dollars. So we have to go and look at it in American yeah. dollars. Sorry, yeah, that is confusing. That's okay. <laughs> we will figure something out. It's so funny um, because on the platform, it only shows me American dollars. So obviously it's only showing you Australian. How confusing. I just assumed I, you knew what was going on. No, I, I, what, whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll figure it out. I don't even know what yeah. goes on. Um, I, I feel like, like, let's just make everything harder. I don't know yeah. why, like, as like life, like just guys, can we get it together? Um, <laughs> anyway, so guys, if you're just coming into the live, welcome. Hi, um, my name is Dina. This is Lindy. I'm creator of fucking honest Oracle cards, crude creatures, like four or five decks, like amazing. And we're doing, um, some live card pills. It's crude creatures, right? That's the, right. The deck, crude creatures. Crude creatures. Yes which will be backwards in the video, but um, yes, that's crude creatures. And it was funny because when I was creating them, because I've been uh, playing with this deck probably for the last 18 months, I reckon. And it's a weird thing with me when I create decks, I'll be halfway through or, or halfway through creating one. I'll have all the words. The words come in really quickly, like the titles and the actual written booklet bit. It's the putting it together that takes the time uh, for me anyway. And um, it's always as soon as all the writing's done and it's all edited and whatever, I get the download for the next one really quickly. And I actually thought for a long time these were going to co be called the fucking honest animal cards. That was my plan all along. Oh. But I just couldn't. I kept, There was all these delays and all these hold-ups with the artwork and with the printing and with the formatting and blah, it took forever. And the minute that the name dropped in for Crude Creatures, boom, everything just it's glowed. Like, Isn't that funny how that happens oh. energetically? It is amazing when you, when everything becomes in an in alignment, it just, it's like turning on the water spigot. Yeah. It's crazy how it just goes. Absolutely. And it had been so, well, not difficult. I love the process, but it had just been so clunky when it, when it was the fucking honest animals and it clearly was not meant to be. So crude creatures, boom, everything fell into place. So yeah, really good. The creatures wanted to be called crude. They didn't want yes. to be fucking honest. That's right. So, you know, it's fine. And I didn't Even though they're, they're honest. They are exceptionally honest, yes. <laughs> they really are. To the point of being brutal, but oh. that's okay. We love it. <laughs> we, listen, we're going to go. I, I mean, you know, it's, it's so interesting because I, again, like when you said that you had gotten Oracle cards and you were like pulling out the card meetings and you're like, what exactly does this mean? 
I, I think like with your decks, like there's so like, it's just like, here it is. Get it together. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cut the crap. That, maybe that's the next deck. Cut the Ooh. crap. <laughs> Ooh, I'm about it. I'm about that one. So does anybody, <laughs> does anybody else want a card pull? We have a little bit more time or have left. A question? Ooh, any questions? questions? I'm happy to answer questions. Any, any questions, card pulls, um, any info? Any questions regarding, you know, doing energy work, leaning into your psychic abilities or gifts, what that might look like or feel like to somebody, you know, now is the time because you're, you're talking to somebody who works in this capacity all the time. Um, yes. Bella, Bella's mama asked for a pull, yeah. a card pull. Oh, they jumped out for you, Bella's mom. Oh, and I love this. This is one of the artwork. This is what, what this is one of the very first outfits of artwork I got, and I just bloody fell in love with it. But it's the ladybug. So all the little so bugs cute. have been around. Yes, she's just so happy. Manifest fucking now. Yes, yes, yes. Do that. Where's the no oh, number one card? Number one. And it says manifest the shit out of what you want now. There is a fuckload of energy with a massively positive vibe to it, just begging for you to notice it. Don't dick around as availability is a limited time offer. Ooh, it, yes. you know what? That's, that's a one. Okay. That's a great message because it's true. Mm. It is a, it is always a limited time offer. It's, it's always limited. And when you're in that energy and it's coming to you and you get these ideas and then you don't pay attention to it, it's like, well, fuck you. We're going to go to somebody else then that's going to pay yes. attention. <laughs> Absolutely right. And the same can apply when you get an, a, a, a feeling or an inclination, inclination or an intuitive um, thing and you kind of know what it is, but you question the fuck out of it, it will die. Like sometimes mm -hmm. you've got it, that, that word trust that sounds easy, but it's so frigging hard. Sometimes you've just got to go, all right, oh, I believe you or thank you. I'll do what I can. You don't have to honor it to the nth degree, but sometimes you've got to just stop fucking arguing with what comes in as well. That's helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's crazy because we, we do argue with it. Or give me, oh, thank you for the sign, but can I have another <laughs> sign to confirm the sign? Yes. They need another sign. <laughs> give me a signier sign than the sign. <laughs> Can you show me a blue feather? No, no, no. I meant blue striped feather. No, no, no. I meant two blue feathers. Right? Yes. Oh, we can definitely. Yeah, we complicate the shit out of stuff because we're human. That's what we do. So don't hate yourself for it. Just try hard not to. Exactly. So um, Lee had asked when you're, do you work with any crystals as you receive your downloads, either in your psychic work or just working to, to download the cards or channel them? Do you work with crystals as something that you're comfortable with? Do you have them in your home? What are your favorites? Yeah, absolutely. Work with crystals all the time. I, I often, if someone's in person, I will put them, um, I'll give them crystals to hold while I work with them if I'm doing a healing session. But often crystals will come through um, for people as, you know, oh, you need, you need green aventurine to, to support your healing after this. Because I always say to people, you have a session with me, but the energy continues working long after we've, you know, disconnected from each other because it's your energy working, but sometimes it just needs a little bit of a boost. So often things like um, well, my favourites tend to be, or the ones that come up the most for me, tend to be um, citrine, selenite, green aventurine, rose quartz, clear quartz. Um, it tends to be those ones the most. I'm trying to think of the Oh, malachite's another favourite. Mm -hmm. um, ironstone and... Um, um uh what's the other one that starts with m that's very grounding tiger iron as well there's a, there's quite yeah, yeah so yes i have my house full of crystals it's like my healing room particularly yeah so my healing room is a separate like it's got a little separate entrance at my house and my family because they are not into any of this shit at all i've got my husband's electricity uh, an electrician oh, and my okay. boys are 19 and 22 and as i said one's got autism and one's a sports nut so they've got no concept of what the hell i do out in that room they just refer to it as my hippie room and they say, oh, you're going out to hang out with your shiny rocks, are you, mum? <laughs> That's great. See, you can be in this work and still have regu regular family. Yes, absolutely. And I think that we can get a bit stuck on that. We think that, oh, we, everybody needs to fully understand what I do and be involved and blah. No, I've got none of that and things are flourishing it doesn't you don't need that at all you just need to run your own fucking race and let everybody else do what they got to do so that's how it works 
I love that. All right, we have time. Time for one more. We're gonna do um, conisms. We'll do a card pull, and maybe we'll do like a a card pull for tomorrow. But which would have been yesterday for you? <laughs> yes. No. A card pull for <laughs> an hour tomorrow you. and you're today. <laughs> yes, that's right. Reassure you that the Wednesday is actually genuinely great. So is this a card pull for someone first? Yes, this is. Conisms. That's their that's their uh, name. Conism. Okay, conism. Scream. Just fucking scream. We'll move that energy. Twenty seven. And that's from the fucking honest deck. So where are we? Oh. So it says, grab a pillow and shout every profanity you know into it as loud as you can. Or sing at the top of your lungs every daggy song you remember from your teenage years. Either way, clear out your throat chakra and any communication crap that is feeling blocked. You'll feel so much fucking better when it's done. Mm. Absolutely. Yep. The feeling Scream better. It out. Shout it out. It does. You know what? It the, the bottleneck of that throat stuff just gets all gunked up in there. So I, I get it that. It does. Move it, yeah, move absolutely. it around. Absolutely move it around oh we've actually got two for your tomorrow my today oh, is that all right with okay you? what do we what do we got this so is a collective pull for our for tomorrow or australia's today <laughs> yes that's right um so we've got unicorn i'll take the unicorn unicorn is all about your fucking awesome imagination so we'll read that one first and then i'll get the next one and it says Re reality is not required let your imagination run wild like a unicorn fighting glitter and peeing champagne. What do you want? Where are you going? Give yourself permission to gallop off into your sparkly future where your dreams flourish gloriously. There's a whole lot of creative, positive, abundant energy around you right now. For fuck's sake, use it. Yes, absolutely use it. That's the thing. It. We often have this energy and we don't use it. So do that for sure. I know. We're like too. We're too busy. Not now. I don't have the time. You know. Yeah. Yeah. All the bullshit excuses under the sun. And then the other one is ant. Da, 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 da. Um, and it says seek some fucking support. So it says determined gang member. Time to make like an ant and seek the support you need to get really get shit done. You are definitely a tough and capable little fucker. However, you need to stop trying to do everything on your own. Outsourcing or seeking support is the best way to multiply your opportunities and productivity endlessly. People, and probably ants, really do fucking love you and are there for you right now. Time to ask for assistance. Oh, I love that message. I love that. And ants, you know, they work in a colony. They all work together. Yeah, so. and we are, that's what we're here for. I honestly say... My, um, my, one of my beautiful boys, I remember when he was really little sitting at the kitchen bench saying, why are we here, mum? And I said, we're having breakfast. He said, no, why are we here? And went, this is where we live. And that questioning kept going and going until he said, why are we here? And I said, everyone is here to help someone in some way or another. And he was like, oh, okay. And he was all right with that. It was like the meaning of life he was working out when he was four, but that's okay. Um, but it's true. We are all here to contribute to each other in whatever way we can. So don't ever, ever, ever think that you're insignificant and what you're doing is not important. It absolutely is. Smile, for fuck's sake. You know, reach out to people. Be kind. All that shit matters more than anything else you could do. I love that. I think that there could be no better way to end this live than with that sentiment. That was totally one of the most poignant things I think that I've heard all year. And we're oh, already in October, so you yeah. definitely win, win the prize. <laughs> um, Lizzie, thank you so much for spending time. You guys, we're going to get the pre-order up to Crude Creatures tonight. The fucking honest Oracle cards are available on our website. We are, you know, ready to ship them. You know, Crude Creatures is in a pre-order situation Hope, before holiday, you think, yes. right? Before, before holiday. Awesome. Thank you so much for spending time with us and, and in having your breakfast and your morning, your morning with us. We really appreciate you. You guys go give Lindsay a follow. Can people book you book virtual sessions? People can book with you virtually. Yeah, absolutely. On my website, um, that can be done and, and it can all be paid PayPal and stuff. So that will work out the money by itself. So um, yeah, absolutely. Go to my website, lindyjewel.com.au. Uh, and book yourself a session online. And absolutely, I'd love to meet as many Americans as I can. That'd be great. Awesome.
Thank you so much. Have Thank a wonderful so day. Much for having I mean, Dana. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day. It'll be for night. See ya. <laughs> Good night. Bye. Good morning.